Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to go to from speech to text in your Expo React Native app without having to eject from Expo. So first off you're going to want to install React Native Voice and Expo Dev Client. So the Expo Dev Client is going to allow you to basically automate the um, linking and adding stuff to the um, iOS projects and Android projects without actually having to add them. And so that's what this um, plugin line that I'm adding to the app.json file is going to do. So it's got plugin, it specifies the package and it specifies the text that will display on screen when it's requesting permission to um, record the voice, which it then can use to convert it into actual text from your speech. If you don't have EAS CLI installed, you'll need to do that and you can run these commands, login and configure. I've already got it installed and I'm already logged in, so I just need to run a build configure. What that's going to do is it's going to generate a build profile for you. I'm gonna do it for both iOS and Android and I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this. And for development, I'm going to want to, for iOS, allow it to be generating for the simulator. So I'll go iOS simulator true. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and I can use this build command to build the um, app locally and it's going to create something that I can just drag and drop onto my simulator. The dash dash local means that you can use debugging for it and it's specifying that the profile will be development and its platform is iOS. It'll prompt you to um, confirm a few things and then it'll go ahead and actually go and generate that build. And once it's successful, you'll get a file like a folder like this, just a tar file. If you open in Finder and click on that, then it's going to give you that app that you can install on your simulator. If you're on Windows, you can do the same, but for Android, and you can actually use the Android build on physical devices as well. So once that's installed, it'll be ready to be started with Expo Start Dev Client. But first off, I'm just going to add my code for speech to text. So I'm going to want a button I can press that will allow me to start and stop um, the translation from speech to text. I'm also going to want use effect from React and use state from React. Use effect will be used to register listeners when the component mounts and also to deregister listeners and destroy the voice um, tool. I'm also going to import voice from the voice package so that I can do my speech to text. So first off, I'll just specify my button. I'm going to want to give that a title. So the title I'm giving that is just start speech to text. And on press, we're going to want to call a function, which I'll define in a moment. So I'm just going to call it start speech to text. Now I can go ahead and define that function. So inside this function, we're actually going to do the calling to start the voice translation from speech to text and also set that we are doing that so that the stop button will show. While I'm here, I'm just going to also create my function to stop speech to text. And that's going to do the reverse. It's going to basically stop the translation of speech to text and also set that we're not um, started. So I'm going to use a state variable to control whether we've started or not. And that's going to control which button is on screen, whether it's the start or the stop one. 
So I'm going to use state and by default we're going to start as not recording and the user will have to click to start recording. So if it's started, not started, we're going to want to show the button. The start button, I mean, as there'll be two buttons. And if it is started, we want to show undefined because we don't want to show a button there. Actually, I could just show in my um, stop button here, but it would have been a bit long, so it's fine to just leave it as it is now. It'll keep it a little bit simpler in terms of um, readability and line length. So yeah, I could have put those on one line if it was started, start button, if it's um, a stop button, if it's not started, then start button, but oh well. I'm going to make these start and stop async because the um, voice command that we're using is a asynchronous function. So what you do is you'll call voice.start and that will start that recognition and conversion from speech to text um, and you'll pass in a locale. So I'm using English New Zealand because I'm from New Zealand and then I'm just going to set that state variable to true so that the stop button will show and I'll await that voice.start. I'll do something very similar in the stop speech to text. I'll just go voice.stop and I'll set started to false because we are stopping the speech to text. Now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and we can add our listeners so that we um, get some results. And I'm going to actually store that results in a state variable so I can show it inside the app. So I'm going to once again use state and the results is actually an array. So I'm doing use effect, which means that basically this function will be called once when the component mounts and the return value of this statement is what will be called when the component unmounts. We're going to add some listeners. So on speech error, we're going to call an on speech error function that I'll define in a moment. And voice.on speech results, I'll define a function for that in a moment too. I'll just call it on speech results. Like I said, we want to return a way of deregistering and cleaning up this voice package. And so I'm creating a function here. And what that's going to do is a voice.destroy. And when that returns a result, it's going to go ahead and deregister all the listeners. And that's just going to do our cleanup for us. So now I need to go ahead and define my on speech error and on speech result functions. So we're going to get a uh, um, value passed in that's going to be the result and it's got a property value which will give us the actual results of the text from the speech and we're going to do something very similar with the error but we're just going to console log the error in a real app you could choose to do with, with the error whatever you wanted to do So now that we've got results set, we're going to want to display them. So we're just going to do a quick mapping of the results to a text component. So we'll go results.map and basically for each element in the array, it's going to return a component and the component is going to have that result in it as text and the key will be the index.
And that text component is just going to show our speech to text result. Cool. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and save. And we can go ahead and run this expo start dev client command. That's basically going to mean we can use that um, generated app instead of what we have already set up. So what we've um, got is our, um, our package that we've already sort of installed on our app and generated earlier. And it's got all the um, appropriate libraries linked. So if we go open that, it's just going to go and bundle and build. Once it's bundled and ready, your app's just going to go ahead and open like you had developed, um, and you'll be able to test out your start, your speech to text functionality. It'll prompt you with some permissions. Hello there, this is a test. And then it will give you the ability to um, test out that your Hello YouTube speech to text is actually working. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content and all my code will be available on GitHub.